What's going on guys, Perry Customs here. It's been a little while, but uh, as you can see, I got into lawnmower racing. It's fun. Um, last year I raced this chassis, nothing but troubles. So we're building one from the ground up here on this channel. And uh, if you wanna see how it goes, stick around because it's gonna be a good one. Today marks the start of our journey to build a brand new chassis of this. I picked up a John Deere 185. It was complete minus engine, but that doesn't matter anyway. We're gonna totally strip it down right to the bare frame and build from there. I'll include a picture of what it looked like, and by the end of the video, you're gonna see how it looks. <laughs> I picked up the 185 for $50, so it's going to be, I guess, a bit of a budget build, whether we start tearing parts off of this to throw onto that, because pretty well over that thing now. Nothing but troubles and headaches at the tracks. Just not fun. So now, after you guys watching that time lapse of me trying to get that disaster out of here, I'm going to start taking more of the stuff off underneath because I'm eventually going to put it up on the bench over there and get to making this thing a racer. So there's usually just a couple bolts. I guess they'd be nuts. Long arms off, if I'm not mistaken. And since this is channeled and it widens at the front, should be able to just knock these down. Should be. I brainstorm about the front here. I'm just gonna start all this stuff comes off. Less weight the better for uh, racing these tractors. Less weight the better. So as you can see now, starting to get a bit bare underneath there. Front axle, uh, that's the clutch pedals off under there. This was the, uh, the old belt driven clutch that's now off there. That's the rear end and then hood fenders. So someone had put in a homemade lift kit in this, I guess, or I believe actually they Converted it from a hydrostatic to a six speed. That's why all this stuff, like they even welded that thing in there to uh, shift the gears. But uh, they've welded stuff onto the frame here. So I'll have to uh, cut all that stuff off. And uh, I'll just keep plugging away, trying to get it closer to going on the bench. Um, still haven't found anything out about that, whether I have to cut them totally off or... Maybe I'll have to unbolt that skid plate, and I believe, actually, yeah, that's probably what it is. You unbolt that skid plate, and the whole thing drops out as one you're left with a bare C channel. Okay, so now we're at the point that I have brainstormed too. I had to remove a whole whack of bolts over here, a whole whack of bolts over here. 
but there's only one left holding that in there. And now that will come out. And then from there, we will put it on the bench and start taking the steering stuff apart to get just the bare frame where I can measure and map out where the rear axle and the front axle is going to go and then seat position, engine, steering, all that fun stuff. So yeah. So the last step would be, now that I have gotten that loose and determined how to get it loose, I'm going to have to drop this back in and then get that front piece out and then we will be on to the bench. Junk there because I'm not going to use it. And look at that. Boom. Fully stripped frame. Time to go to the bench. There, so now we have this frame 99.9% .9 stripped. It's on the bench now. It was a fact of John Deere 185. Now, some history is. Not history, I guess, advice. I picked this lawnmower specifically for its frame because it has full C-channel frame rails opposed to this one that I raced last year. And I don't know if you're familiar with these. Uh, I can't even remember what it was. I have one at my parents' house. It's the same thing, but it's still a lawnmower. Uh, it was a yardsman. So it's a three-quarter frame, so frame starts there and it probably ends about here and then from there back it's literally just boxed fenders is what holds it all together so on this one this is the end of the frame right here the frame ends there so everything back there is what I've welded in so I've welded inch by inch or inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing back to reinforce it to to uh, keep it from flexing. Now this was a good chassis, but having it said like that, with that tubed rear end, I did a mistake and put my chain and sprocket under here. So now I couldn't lower the seat at all, which was a problem because there's a very high tipping point on that and it just necessarily did not feel safe. So the plan is for this one, we're just lowest seat, lightest, and obviously hoping for the fastest machine out there. So I guess the uh, last part of this video will be me pulling this makeshift gear, shift assembly, I don't know, like I'll show you. Like this guy was really, really trying to uh, make something here, but 
I guess it worked for him, but it's not for me because I will not be using a transaxle. It will be a solid go-kart axle in the rear. So, no need for this contraption. So we'll be keeping that bolt though. And on this side. Just like that, homemade gear shifter assembly. Hit me up if you want to buy it. I'm only kidding. This is going right in the garbage. <laughs> so I'm just marking out here on the table, going from that build over there. Overall length is 64 inches, bumpers in. Um, so from the front here, front of the frame chassis the rear axle is eight inches from the front not from the bumper i don't mention from there so it's eight inches in from the uh, front of the lawnmower i guess i can mark the eight inch there and the eight inch there so whether i chop the frame here and run the axle on front and then a bumper off of that just to make it shorter, more compact, and I guess save some weight on the front seat channels. Do that, make it all square and even, and then just keep puttering away from there. Um, not entirely sure what I have or what I'm gonna do yet. Oh, we have to do uh, Nerf bars on this. and. Once all that safety stuff and actually make it run and drive, then comes the aesthetics like the choosing what hood and what fenders. I believe I'm still going to run the John Deere hood, the uh, 185 hood, or maybe a Cub Cadet hood, I'm not sure yet. But I did get these uh, fenders here from a friend of mine there. Uh, Air, whether that be airbrush or a decal, but it doesn't seem to be a decal. So whether these end up going on there or not, I'm not sure. Um, I guess it'll be in the months ahead to decide. Or you guys can decide if you really want to. Um, these fenders I have here, or those are the John Deere ones there that had come off it. Obviously, they would have to be cut up and... I believe I would bondo over the shifter slot there and sand it all down, make it look pretty. Um, that's the hood there. That's the old yardsman hood that used to be on this. I switched to a craftsman hood. That's what the sticker said anyway. Um, I also have that 108 John Deere hood. Um, either that or the uh, cream-colored Cub Cadet, the big hood on it. But uh, I guess those are all decisions after the fact of when it's built. I just set those fenders on there. But I mean, it looks pretty mean right now. I'm not going to lie. I may have to go with those fenders. This was on the identical frame. My, uh, my buddy was running one of these ones as well. He's the one who hooked me up with the 185. But it's all cut out already for the seat. So... Really, there won't be much trimming of the fenders. It'll honestly just be picking a hood and then going from there. That's going to be it for the video today, guys. This 185 is totally different from when it rolled in the shop. Hour, hour and a half ago now. <laughs> we made a lot of progress tonight. Totally stripped down. Got the fenders on there. I already see a vision in my mind. Drop a like if you like what you've seen. Comments are welcome. And if you want to see more of this build coming up in the next few months subscribe.